Hello and welcome to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway here tonight. We've got the Binks Designs 150 on tap for you here. Two 50 lap races here in Las Vegas for the 2024 OA Oska Week in Woodsman Series. Round number eight on tap here for you tonight. My name is Justin Kolb alongside Race Clark and as always Carlos Costa working the cameras, doing the work behind the scenes, making us look good here tonight. Hope you can tolerate me and Race's voices here tonight. Uh, race. Again, 50 laps here to start out tonight. Going to be a 4 p.m. in sim time. Looking at practice, looked like these guys were pretty snappy off the corners. I'm thinking that's going to lead to some exciting racing. Hopefully not a lot of wrecks here tonight, but uh, definitely should keep these guys on their toes. Agreed, Justin. It was looking a little loose out there, a lot more loose than I expected for Las Vegas, but two races, double the opportunity to do a little gamble in Las Vegas, get lucky. Who knows what happens? We've got the big invert this evening. Really interested to see how that plays out and how people kind of take on the strategy for two races. Absolutely. Looking at the points here tonight, Dylan Thomas in command of that at the moment with 397 points. Austin Beers not too far behind there in that second spot. Darren Staff not too far behind as well. Caden Tufts in fourth, Ty McIntosh in fifth. You can see that on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the team standings here for this season. Shift Esports at the top of the board at the moment. South Shore Racing not too far behind, only 40 points behind at the moment. Still a lot can change with that. Do Good Motorsports in third spot, only a point behind. And again, still a lot of time this for in this season for that to change here. Got qualifying going on at the moment. You can see some of those times at the bottom. You can see the uh, leaders there at the top. 10 minutes here in this practice. These guys got 20 laps to complete it. Um, open qualifying, so everybody out there at the moment. Um, not too too long to get your uh, your good times in. Got to make sure the track is clear, and uh, got to make sure you put that fast lap in for the first round here tonight. Yep, thank you so much, Justin. Welcome to the booth. Same thing with you, Race. It is a, pro it is a privilege to have you guys here uh, in my broadcast booth here for I think the first time you guys, I think you guys have been doing this together, or unless you, race you hopped into one of his, uh, one of Justin's old uh, uh, full throttle TV uh, broadcasts back in the day. I don't remember if he did that. Um, At least so. But yeah. Oh, okay. Well, for the for a reunion then. <laughs> um, <laughs> tonight's race, of course, as Justin mentioned, the Binks Designs 150. Not only are they sponsoring tonight's race, they are also sponsoring the. Um, excuse me, the Commentators uh, Broadcast Championship, the 2024A Binks Designs Broadcast Championship, which unfortunately for me, my chances of being Mr. Three Time in a Row are getting smaller and smaller as the as the races go on by. Goody is on top with 436 points. Uh, the driver's pick, rookie driver's pick, by the way, I should add, the first time we're doing this, 420 points in second place. Vic nice solid third actually trying for the first time in his life uh, i'm in fourth trevor is in fifth uh cherry six and matt in seventh and i don't know if we're going to be adding your names to the graphics but you guys are going to be having each a chance at um at making driver picks and of course we want to thank binks designs for sponsoring oh what's up no uh, if you go sorry i forgot where we at <laughs> vic did not trust me for a second uh, Binks Design is a local New Jersey graphics design company that specializes in all of your custom apparel and Tumblr needs. Check, the, check out their website at binksdesigns.myshopify.com and you will also find that on the link below. Um, so Let's go. Uh, let's do Justin first. Yeah, Justin, why don't you go ahead and give us who do you think is going to win tonight's half one? Man, this might be a, a little bit of an easy one, but I think I'm going to go with my man Darren Staff. I know he's always got some speed in that 45 car. I think he takes home half number one here tonight. All right. Race, who you got for half one? You know, based off practice, where I was looking at, I'm really liking Ray Bracey tonight. Put me down for Ray Bracey. Oh, damn, that's that's a good pick. Uh, so Cherry says he wants the 19 and half one. So we'll give him Austin Beers. Uh, Trevor, ironically enough, also wanted him, but uh, his second pick is is the six of uh, Mr. Me Fine, Zach Evans. So that's the pick you will be getting. Carlos, you're up. Well, I need to start gaining points, and I wanted to pick this driver last week. Didn't get the chance to do so. I'm going to put my money on the 17th of Ethan Stanley. 
That's, that is a, a great pick. Uh, so, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick this guy at all the rest of the season. So I'm going to do it tonight. Uh, I'm going to go for the guy that is the most successful driver ever to race in Oska. I'm going to go for the guy that's filling in, in the Binks Designs car, of course, the 66 is Johnny Ecker. Wait, he's racing? I didn't even know that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Should have snoozed on that one. Darn. Mm, <laughs> sure snoozed. I'll be. Uh, the drivers in half one, they want the 15 car, which is fantastic. Uh, and Goody says that for half one... Oh, geez, Goody. He wants the 52. Well, Jess is not driving it, so that's a solid pick. There you go, yeah. Uh, as long as I'm not in that car. <laughs> Looks pretty good in practice, too, so. Not a bad, not bad pick in 52. 52 currently in ninth, uh, ninth in points. Uh, excuse me, ninth in uh, speed right now qualifying. So that's going to do it for your Binks Designs uh, 2024 A Broadcast Championship picks for half number one. Ethan Stanley currently, free. yes sir, Ethan Stanley currently leading the way there, that 30.644, Richard Garcia second at the moment, that 699, Ryan Gavel in that number one, 30.720, it's top three at the moment. As you said, very stacked field at the moment, tight in terms of times at the moment. Three, very loose, you know, kind of uncharacteristic for Vegas, I think, so very interesting to see how that's going to play out. Yeah, definitely saw a lot of it in practice. These guys having to hold a very steady wheel. It seemed like a lot of them, it went away in a hurry. The handling, the rear end wanted to snap around really quick. So it's going to be interesting to see if that's uh, it's going to be a trend in the race. And I know the uh, the Heat 2 is going to be at 10 o'clock. It's going to be in the night. So it's going to be interesting to see if the handling turns around at all for these guys. Very interesting. Got on board here with Zach Evans during his qualifying attempt. Two minutes and change remaining. Zach Evans, uh, I believe, fine. was, yeah, me fine, was uh, uh, a driver's pick. Who, who, who picked Zach Evans again? I did not. Great collection. No. Yeah, that is a great collection. Now, actually, I don't think anybody picked Zach Evans. I'm sorry, Zach Evans. I singled you out. Well, I'll root for you, Zach. That's right. Always got to root for Zach. Mm -hmm. Good guy. Okay, so one of the things that's been happening lately is everybody in Oscar has an obsession with a certain somebody's driver, BPM. So right now, this is Kynan Jones, qualifying BPM of 107. We've seen it shoot as high as 174. Get this man a doctor, please. Um, <laughs> he, he says it's he feels okay and everything's fine. I worry a little bit. And it's, uh, I don't know if he knows that we're looking at him now because it, it has skyrocketed 20 uh, or so beats per minute. It's, it's now, well, not 115, but uh, let's take a look. His speed has improved over the last couple seasons, especially even more so this season where he's had already two possible wins uh, go out the door because of a last minute caution. So um, this man, he's looking to turn his luck around. And I think, you know, this is a good track as any to get it done. Let's say, heck of a place to do it. Awesome you gotta roll tech. the dice here, Vegas. That 17 car. On the top of the board still. Yeah, right now it doesn't look like anybody's gonna be touching Stanley's lap. Uh, Richard Garcia not too far away, neither is Gavel, but none of those drivers are on track at the moment. Next up is Ty McIntosh in, uh, in fourth. Track there at the moment. Uh, improve a little bit. 50 seconds ago here in qualifying. A little wreck on the front. It's looking like that's maybe where they're going to stack up here tonight. Just these guys looking for a little bit of improvement for the end of it here. Go on board here with uh, Darren Staff, one of the RKM drivers. Here is his camera. Excuse me, I thought I had it open. Darren Staff currently third in points, his best points uh, run so far in his Oscar career. You see him both hands on the wheel there. I know the last few times I raced with him, it seemed like he was uh, eating something each time during qualifying, so. Oh, he's hungry. Yeah. Yeah, big dog's gotta eat. 
deal. Good looking car on that too. Always love to see his uh, Mountain Dew cars. And that'll do it. We're qualifying. That'll wrap it up here. These Be guys. Go ahead. Now we're going to be transitioning on over to the actual race session. And here's the starting grid. Why don't you guys take it away? Yes, sir. We got that 17 of Derek Stanley on the front row. And then, I'm sorry, Ethan Stanley on the front row there. Richard Garcia <laughs> in second. Ryan Gavel in third. Ty McIntosh. That'll wrap up your front two rows there. We got Gilberto Javier Gomera, P5. Tristan Millette, P6. Darren Staff. P7, and Johnny Eckert, P8. You're going to have Ray Bracey in that seven starting in the ninth position. Jake Scarborough starting in 10th. Kynan Jones talked about turning his luck around. He's going to be starting just outside that top 10 in 11th. And then Kyle A. Carson is going to be starting in 12th. Or in 11th, I'm sorry. Starting off 13th, we got Austin Beers, wonderful name. 14th, David Westergreen. P15, Drew Eisenman, good old friend. P16, Dylan Thomas. P17, DJ Weeks. And P18, Zach Evans. Then you're going to have James Watson in the 19th position here. Thomas Capuano starting in 20th. Adam Peeler starting 21st. And Caden Tufts in 22nd. And then finishing off here, 23rd, Dustin Deer. Hope I said that right, Dustin. Matt Deer. Hackathorn in P24. <laughs> Dave Carpenter in P25. And rounding off the qualifiers, Jordan Tarble in P26. And our final three, Tim Conrad, P27. Alex Kenton, P28. And Rashid Coles, P29. And 29 car field here tonight. The top 23 will be your invert for half number two. Yep, thank you so much, fellas. I also want to go ahead and say thank you to Weekend Woodsman's for sponsoring this series this season, last season, and hopefully many more seasons to come. We have a fantastic video um, to play that they have provided us. So we're going to go ahead, play that video, and come back to hopefully call the start of a full green flag race be sure to check out tim mayo conrad and the weekend woodsman crew on youtube make sure you hit that like button to get notifications when a new video drops and check us out on instagram and facebook enjoy the race and our thanks once again to weekend woodsman for sponsoring series and always uh, week in, week out here. So we've got a little bit of time here before we take the green light still on that Chevy Silverado. And 50 laps here. Probably going to be a long time for these guys feeling it in the car. Again, it was uh, was looking pretty treacherous through uh, the practice session here. I know I think it, I saw a 94 degree track temp here tonight. So that is going to be pretty steamy here and uh, again hoping that uh, turns around for them a little bit here once we turn in tonight um I'm sure that'll help with some of the snappiness in this car but uh race vegas always a, a fun time um fun track here and uh, always kind of always fun to uh to race here agreed justin the progressive banking really opens up a lot of options that's a great point something i should look at 94 degree track temp these guys are loose. A lot of options on strategy and how you're going to manage them tires because it can tighten up back on you too. You don't take care of the tires. So I'm really curious to see how you're going to balance a short race with an invert but at the same time managing a little bit of tire. Remember, two sets of tires for each half. So that is one set. Uh, excuse me, two sets of tires in the pits for each half. So three sets uh, total, six sets total overall between both halves. Uh, just two in pit road. Well, depending on how many cautions we get, it'll be interesting to see if we use all those here tonight. I'm sure if we need to, they will be definitely in to, to get both sets here. All right, we have one to go. To use it. And we're going to be starting the race off here uh, when they cross the start finish line. Good deal. Well, again, a 50-lap race to start here tonight. 50 laps for both heats. Again, a 23-car invert here. So top 23 will invert at the start of heat number two here. 
I'm pumped. Ready to get underway so here. Yeah, I am as well. These drivers sure know how to give us a good time. Absolutely. Should be a fun race waiting for that truck to turn down. It does. 17 of Ethan Stanley will lead them down to the green flag. It is in the air, and we are racing from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Let's see how this one takes place down to turn one. Good even start for the front row there. 17 just breaking out now. Side by side for a second, looking like that's how they're going to run down the back straight away. Outside yeah. line, starting to get some more momentum. Almost looking at three wide on the inside there. Thought better of it. Pretty smart. 20 Sir. laps to go. Still side by side. A lot of the way through this pack off turn four. Give it to the 57. Lead lap one. Richard Garcia will lead the first lap as they enter turn one again. Still side by side fighting for that lead. Really curious to see how this is going to play out because, you know, the high signs of leading lap one, but here 17 clears him this time coming out two. We really have to see Very how this Very tight out. racing, man. At right. 29. Almost made it three wide there. They are three wide back in the pack there a little bit. That 45, Darren Staff in the middle. Ray Bracey on the high side. That's what I'm talking about. May look like he's going to get shuffled out a little bit on that high side, but I think he'll have that momentum off turn four. Can't get the nose on that 45. He'll get that outside lane. We've seen these drivers constantly uh, take different approaches uh, on, on various different tracks, whether it's uh, outside, middle, or the inside. But uh, even more so now that iRacing has been rolling out that uh, oval refresh, and it's been making the outside line even easier uh, and, and more, more of a performance factor than it has before. So we've seen drivers like Cameron Rich utilize the outside line to multiple victories. We've seen other drivers uh, push it a little too far and smack the outside wall. So it would not surprise me if we see a couple of drivers trying to run that uh, Kyle Larson line of approval only to end up in bitter disappointment. Yeah, to that point, that's the way it looked like in practice. I couldn't really tell which side looked to be more preferred. It looking, was looking like it was leaning towards the outside a little bit just to get that momentum off. But bottom line definitely still looked racy there. This is still a very close pack in this top group here. It looked like the top line might have been preferred, but the tires got up to temperature. Bottom line's looking pretty good, but we almost got a traffic jam right here in the desert. Pretty competitive. The pack's still pretty bunched up here, considering we're, what, five laps deep? It's a pretty good assessment, yeah. Nobody has really been able to get away from each other. Seen a little bit oh. of three wide. Yeah, someone got the wall off there. Turn four. Deep. Yeah, not sure who that was. It, it could have also just been iRacing thinking somebody did, uh, but nobody actually did. We got some close calls. Uh, I want to point uh, the viewer's attention over to number fifth, uh, number 13 in 15th place. That's Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas, you're wondering why is his number highlighted in red as we have a battle for the lead? That's because he's the points leader, and the points leader has a special race banner that's in the color red and also on the tickers to demonstrate that he is, in fact, the points leader. The battle for the lead, guys. Yeah, that points leader, Dylan Thomas, looking to make up some positions, but so is that 17 of Ethan Stanley trying to finally take that lead away. At the moment, he does. I don't think that he'll be able to fight back in that one. He will not. He is side by side for second now. Yeah, we're going to see how long that one lasts. Like, they're swapping it back and forth, trying out the high side. A lot of experiment right now, trying to figure out where the grip's at. Very interesting. Johnny Eckert taking that second spot using that middle groove there. Now looking like Ryan might be in trouble. No, he might get overtaken for third there, but very close behind that 57 looking to make a move here in one. Going to go to the bottom. Don't think there'll be anything with that. And number 66 of Johnny Eckert, the winningest driver here in Oscar history, showing why he's the winningest driver. One of these drivers went off track. That may have been Drew Eisenman. Got a little loose yep. off of two. A little too much gravy, or a little too much beans actually in the corner. Uh, saved it, no harm. Well, a little bit of, uh, of mental harm, but to the car, it's going to be A-OK. -okay. But uh, going back to Johnny Eckert, up six spots currently so far. Tied with the highest, uh, uh, or I guess most improved driver. Well, not anymore as Alex Kenton is now plus seven as he has now passed Caden Tubbs. But uh, Johnny Eckert doing a good job from his eighth place qualifying start to find himself in second. Most winning as driver looking to add another one here tonight. Already looking very strong there up to second. 
Got quite the gaggle back there. Three wide off turn four. That's going to get pretty close. I can't believe they made that work. Seven car in the middle there. Someone blinking now. That's the 29. Shuffle pretty good, all things considered. Almost looked like four wide, depending on how that shook up. And people thinking better of that crazy race back then. They got that sorted out pretty quickly, thankfully. All right. We have a question uh, on the chat. Uh, sorry about that, Justin. We have a question on the chat. Uh, we have a Hayden Reynolds, uh, Reynolds, excuse me, saying, "Hey, at race, longtime listener, first time chatter. Who is your dark horse for this race?" I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. You know, Hayden. Appreciate your comment. Appreciate your question. My dark horse for this race got to be Ray Bracy. Number seven up there, just ripping on the top side. Three wide, four wide, he don't care. Bright green car, ripping through the field. What's he up to now? That's what. P9, watch yep. out for Ray Bracy. I hate him. Absolutely love that scheme, by the way. That is his cat. Is that correct? Yeah. That's his cat. That's also, I love, love, love your assessment. Ripping through the field has passed nobody. Oh. <laughs> you not listen to my assessment? <laughs> <Let you go. laughs> It just felt good the way he's up there on the high side. It looked good. It looks good, Ray. Keep it up. Does the cat have a name that we know of? What's the cat? Uh, it name? does. I, I can't remember. I don't know if Vic is still in here uh, or if Vic is listening. Um, is it Bojo? It is Bojo. I think so. I think it is Bojo. How much is that cat paying for the sponsorship on that car? I need to know. Oof, that's, um, I didn't need to get the government involved in that one. All right. Yeah, we'll need to see the uh, the payments. A lot of moolah. One. You see what's going on with that. Side by side battle for battle. second at the moment. Yeah, side by side battle for second. It's Gabel and Eckert battling for that position. Uh, Johnny Eckert uh, looks like he may have maybe used up his stuff a little too quickly. Already kind of dropping back. I don't know if he got loose or if that was just the angle, but uh, uh, there's a little bit of um, it's a double-edged sword when you uh, when you push that hard, as you tend to not really hold on to that high-end position once you get up there. Yeah, for sure. Definitely burn some stuff off trying to motor up there quickly as he's going to lose one, two, maybe three spots now here. 95 trying to get by as well. Ty McIntosh might cross over here at the exit of four. He will get the nose Ooh. underneath there. Got an onboard with Ty McIntosh in. himself. Quick fact with, with, with Ty Potty Mouth McIntosh. Um, sometimes when he's in it, he sticks his tongue out like we see it right there. When he's in the hit, heat of the battle, he kind of forgets what's going on and he just likes to stick out that tongue, get a little bit of air in there. Well, Ryan Stanley is loving what he's seen at the moment while all those guys battle behind. Richard Garcia was able to take that second spot, but Ryan up to a 1.3 second lead now, just cruising up front. Ethan. It's this is the, the third different name you've Ethan, given, sorry. Sammy. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've known a lot of Stan Millies in my life. I'm sorry. A bunch of amateurs. I know. Amateur this is, up here. This is like, uh, like Goody calling Justin uh, Kevin Colt. Well, to be fair, Kevin was a celebrity. I have not known any celebrity Stan Millies. But he is cruising right now, Ethan is. Loving what he's seeing behind him. Second spot, Richard Garcia is able to get clear of that mess behind him. And now it's a battle for fourth between Johnny Eckert and that one car, Ryan Gabble. Ryan is hanging on with them tires. Looks like Johnny will be able to take that spot, but I think Ryan will be able to get underneath there. He will fight back on in turn three here. Close one there between him and the 66. This might get pretty close off turn four with that battle just behind. Where's that 66 going to go? Had to go to the top, but that 19, I think, is going to have some momentum there on the bottom. Potential contact between the one and the 66. Benders. Great battle there off turn two. Eckert nowhere to go there off turn four. You see the battle there going multicam now with the nine there and the seventh in the battle. Battle's all over the track here. That's just behind this battle for the fourth spot. Multicam, equal to fan, professional, Carlos is set up. Privileged to be here, great racing. 
Well, Sir Lovell, we're seeing him so far early in the going here. I think they've uh, sort of calmed down here for the moment. Seeing Say one that. Far behind there. Austin yeah. Beer starts going side by side. Yep. Trying to get another spot away from Johnny. I think uh, the more we see the 66 start to lose spots, I think you might be more on to your uh, idea there, Carlos. So I think that 66 may have used up a little bit too much here in the beginning, but he'd be able to cool it down a little bit and fight another day here. We'll have to see. He's going to try again. Nowhere to go, though. Kyle Carson off of four. Uh, drove his car all the way into the apron to uh, kind of cut the track a little bit. I don't think that worked out for him, and it looks like he lost a couple spots in the end. I don't know if the apron's a little too loose or if maybe he clipped the grass, but uh, I kind of hurt him there. Yeah, Carl, well, I think I saw a brown puff. I think that was uh, dirt, not smoke. Yeah, I'm sure if that uh, that rear end's already a little tail happy, that uh, that apron's not going to be your best friend. As he's going to lose another spot to that nine of David Westergreen, just cycling behind and going to cross under here. Going to get the nose underneath. Be side by side down that back. I love the crossing over. We're saying, oh, oh for Matt Hackthorn in pit road. Not sure if this is a scheduled spot uh, stop or not. Uh, uh, looks oh, like it's not. Oh well, maybe oh. it is. Not I mean, we know these guys gonna... have to go down their road. We know they do. Yeah, and we're almost a halfway here in this stage. That was lap 21. Looks like he pitted, so maybe a little bit of an early stop for him, trying to get ahead of these guys. Clean air, new tires, but some good laps. Could be a good move. This is a great battle here, Kyle Carson and David Westergreen. Now David's going to be under attack from behind that 15 of DJ Weeks. All right, let's take a look at Kynan Jones on board. Let's see, currently 23 laps into this race. What is his heart rate looking like right now as he's trying to battle against the 45 of Darren Staff? A nice brisk 126, 120, 130. Yeah, I was gonna say wow. he's in a bit of a mess here. That quickly sorted out. Some great data to see in sim racing too. Still climbing. Yep. Oh, here we go. Green oh, flag pit one. stops are happening. And the 95. So Mike Ty McIntosh, Ryan Gavel on pit road. Nine and David Westergreen going to join him. So I think that 04 did start the green flag cycles yeah. here. Wasn't directly after, but we are seeing the cycle start just about halfway through this first heat. It is a... Uh... It, it's, it's always refreshing to see uh, green flag pit stops in league racing. It's always fun to do so because um, you, you see all these different strategies going on. Many races can be won and lost by entering pit road. Gilberto, the 99 on pit road. Gilberto Javier. Well, that's happened. Still see that great side-by-side -side battle between Drew Eisenman in that 77 and 32 Dusty Dewar. And just in front of them, a good side-by-side -side battle as well. Dylan Thomas and Ray Bracey going at it. Boy, Ray Bracey. You you are in love with that car. Good looking car, fun name to say. I mean, you know, they say if your name Drew starts in R A Y, you on pit lane. Yeah. And uh, Carlson also in pit, uh, pit lane, and uh, Richard Garcia from the top three. Well. By the way, race. I'm not sure I mentioned it. Uh, Hayden did respond back saying, appreciate the response, uh, uh, team, and wish to see a good race. Oh, no! Oh, Ray Bracey oh, in the oh. wall! Caution's out! Oh, no. Oh! oh no. 71! Oh, big wreck! Man, they just keep piling in. That's terrible. Oh, Man. no. It's me and my Pain. And that's going to shake up a lot track. of driver strategies. Yes, it will. What about Austin hey. Beers? He's not pitted yet, right? Uh, uh, Austin Beers has not. He's the current race yet. leader. Let me go ahead and wow. pull up a quick replay so we can uh, find out what happened. Well, actually, let's see if these drivers are going to go down Pear Road right now. If they go down Pear Road, we'll, we'll follow them, and then we'll look at the replays afterwards. But if not, then we'll do a quick yeah. replay or two. I have to imagine this is when they'll uh, right down here. Man, tough break for all those guys. Are the lights on? Looks like the lights are on. Yep. Just to show you how many guys have not pitted yet. 
Looks like a lot of them. Good, good amount of them. I think this this catches twenty first and kind of back a lap down. That's Carl Carlson, Drew Eisenman, Ty McIntosh, Gabble, Western Green. Drivers who were kind of running up front there, but really caught the bad end of the stick. For sure. To their box, clean there. To the race off pit road here. And 17 Ooh. will beat them off. Ethan Stanley. I think they pretty much got off pit road how they came off for the most part. What a game for Austin Beers. For sure. That first pit stop helped out. Or for Ethan Stanley, I should say. Austin Beers, I believe, was the the leader when the caution came out. Really helped him out in this scenario. But let's go ahead and pull up a replay. And unfortunately, for all your Ray Bracey fans, including Race, this is not what you wanted to see from the green, lean, from the lean, mean, green machine. Let's take a look at the contact here. Let's go back a little bit further. Oh, hit the wall, oh. and then got turned got by a uh, Dusty Dragon Doer there. Obviously not on purpose. Yeah, nowhere for Dusty to go there. Man, just gets hammered there by the 71. Is that Dave Carpenter? Yeah. The 51 as well. James Watson. He's on board with Carpenter. Yeah, too bad. I think he just dives to the bottom thinking there's not going to be a car there. And, oh. yeah, yeah, nowhere for him to go. <laughs> Man. And, and listening totally on board. You, you could hear he wasn't even on the throttle. He, he was just laying off, not really expecting the seven to kind of go down there as well as uh, pull up. I believe uh, Watson was another driver involved. Yeah, there he is. There's Carpenter there. And the wreck is a little bit up ahead. They're just not expecting the seven to go down like that. Thinking they're gonna, he's going to hold his brakes up top and not expecting him to shoot the bottom. And nothing you can really do there. He tried, James Watson tried to go to the top, but yeah from the live view it looked a little brutal but then from that point of view you can see why they chose the route they took and it just kind of unfolded like it did that's unfortunate for them is on board with ray bracy you can see him hit the wall try to catch it and then unfortunately dusty dragon doer is there and helps kind of kill that car there like i said obviously not on purpose you can't really do anything about that let me actually see if i can pull up a view from dusty's on board here let's go on the roof cam actually there's the Bojo machine. Slow car ahead. Turns out that was right, unfortunately. Yeah, that was so quick. Oh, do. contact from the zero zero as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if that, that contact. Yeah, I'm wondering if that was maybe what helped him get pushed into that seven there. But tough break for all of them, man. Nowhere for a lot of those guys to go. So first caution that comes out. In the midst of the green flag, uh, excuse me, the yeah, the green pit road cycle. Um, because I have trouble there with my words, so this helped out a lot of drivers, especially your points leader Dylan Thomas, who was running kind of snugly in the top 15th position. Uh, currently finding himself in seventh, so a huge improvement for the number 13. And I'm sure he's gonna be happy about that. This unfortunately does not help out drivers like Ty McIntosh. Ryan Gabble, Wester Green, Gilbert, so all these drivers went down payroll. They do have their laps back, or their lap back there, back in the lead lap. But at a disadvantage now, they have lots of track positions that they have lost out on. And, well, now we're going to see what maybe they can do. And they only have a short amount of time to do it. It's going to be 20 to go when we take the green. So, got a lot of work to do in a short amount of time. Interesting to see what they can do. Yep, went from a green flag, long run strategy to sort of a dash to the finish here. It'd be pretty interesting. Yeah. This could benefit drivers like uh, um, Johnny Eckert, who's in third, maybe push himself a little bit more, but Pace could be pulling off here right now for the first restart of the night. Yeah, going to be interesting to see what Johnny can do with those fresh tires now as Pace truck pulls off. Going to be going green again with 20 laps to go here in heat number one. Wow, a little bit of stack up on the outside there. Yeah. Ethan Stanley kind of gets away clean. If you caught him sleeping or if he just got that good of a jump. Awesome beers. Going to take second spot away from Johnny. I'm sorry, Johnny gets that spot away from the 19. 
they fight for positions behind. You can see them all spread out. Three wide. Multiple. Are we going to make it four? Nope. Still one gambling. Better of it. Yeah, that one, Ryan Gavel, one of the guys who got the short end of the deal there with that caution. So he is going to be looking to make up a lot of ground here. Looking for the lead, Johnny Eckert. Eckert's got the nose. Gonna dive it down into three, side by side. Can Eckert hold it down there? He will. I think that 17 may have the momentum off the top, but still side by side. Advantage still slightly to that 17. That 19 just right behind, waiting for them to sort it out. Darren Staff in second, or in fourth, I'm sorry. He's one of the guys that got a good advantage from that caution. And oh, another wow. one. Yellow is back Oh, no. Out. Oh, oh, Lester Green involved. His night has gone from bad to worse, unfortunately. Sure. Oh, I'm seeing multiple drivers possibly involved in this one. But we were, we were looking at Western Green. I'm seeing Kenton, Dewar, Gavel possibly involved. At least that's, that's the names that are showing up. It could just have been that maybe they came to a stop. But let's, let's go on the replay, see what we can find. It's not three wide there. That's... Oh man! Oh. oh man! Poor Westergreen, just a innocent bystander, and that did a good job. Of Whoa! It did not hit that 96. Very good job by David Westergreen, just locked it down. It, it's possible Westergreen may have gotten the 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 the, the, you know, the best results. Let's see where these guys ended up, and unfortunately, just missing the Jeff Gordon section of the wall. But a lot of these drivers have significant heavy damage, including Gavel. Poor Ryan Gabble, man. Like you said, bad to worse for him. Bad luck on both yellows here in this first heat. That was a big one. Yeah, go on board with Gabble here. Man, innocent bystander. No saving that. Let's see, let's go on board with Dustin Dewar here in car with the gyro cam. Sandwich in this wreck. He did a good job as well, locked it down. I mean, he got made some contact with those cars, but I mean, for the most part, not a lot of heavy contact there. All right, here's on board with David Westergreen, who I had no idea any of this was happening, just got hooked. Oh, outside of... So surprising. You're just looking at the wall all of a sudden. Very fortunate no one else t there. That was Tarble that almost ran. Let's go on board with Tarble, yeah. see exactly how close it was. It was, yeah, was it was very close from what I saw in some of the replays. He's off the throttle. Can't see because oh, of the smoke. Whoa, <laughs> man! There's nothing but smoke in the big move. Well played. Yeah, we look at it from different camera angles, and we're like, how did he not like move out of the way? How did he not see him? You go on board with the roof cam or even the cam, and you really you just see smoke. You don't know where they are. Yeah, he's asking the same question. <laughs> right. All right. Stanley Eckert, Beer, Staff, Jones, Scarborough, Millette, Thomas, Weeks, and Tufts in the top 10 right now. Let me just quickly refresh in case anybody missed it. The current points going into tonight's race. We have the points leader, Dylan Thomas, who has, I believe, I believe been leading the points for three weeks now. Austin Beers in second. We see Austin Beers currently right now in the top three positions. Uh, Darren Staff slowly making his way up. Uh, he's been putting in some good some good results lately. Earned third, Caden Tufts four. All these drivers currently in the top ten. Ty McIntosh was one of the drivers who got caught a lap down during the uh, pit stop cycle. Thomas Capuano, Vincent Isabella in seventh. Gavel, you saw him get caught up in that last wreck and in the uh, pit stop cycle. Garcia ninth and Hackathorn in tenth. Kynan Jones eleventh and Tristan Millette currently the last driver in in 12th. Uh, Ray Bracey in 13th. Bubble Driver. Saw him get involved in that incident. So that's not going to be too good for his uh, points uh, uh, play. Oh, excuse me. Chase off battles which uh, Ray, you're, you're new to this league. So you, we don't call this the playoffs. 
order the chase. We call these the chase offs. Okay, I'm liking that. Too bad for Ray Bracy on the bubble. It's gonna make it a lot tougher. Still got plenty of racing left. It's, it's getting shorter, but plenty of racing. Track is tr a truck is off. We're going back racing here for the second restart of the night as a 17 or Ethan Stanley gets a good run. Uh, whoa, what was that? Seeing some guys, I think, spinning the tires there. I think is that's what you saw. And that just let Ethan Stanley get another great restart there. Battle on for second once again. Going to be third, actually. Here in staff to the bottom. Unfortunate restart there for the 66. Johnny Eckert. Looked like he could lead this race. Now oh, he's kind of man, that's back. gonna be really tight. Whew. Shut the door on Johnny Eckert. Fighting back. Not gonna have any momentum off the corner. Man, I'm telling you, Darren Staff just barely got clear of Johnny down that back straightaway. I don't know if Johnny is too terribly happy about that, but he oh. got the position. Now he's fighting for first. He thought about it. Trying to, at least. Oh, this is gonna be three wide off turn two. Wow. It is! Are they gonna make it work into three? Ethan Stanley not in, hasn't really had to fight much tonight for this lead, but now he's in the middle of three wide. Aaron Staff gonna get the door shut on him, gonna be side by side for the lead now. Our lines are so strong, the 45 look good down in three and four. You just watched 19 and 17 really peel off a of four. 17 looking good in the middle. You know, you probably do that for a handful of laps before the inside line starts to become aware on the tires. So, uh, unfortunately for uh, Darren Staff, it looks like that run on the inside is coming short very quickly. But side by side is Austin Beers and Ethan Stanley battle for the race lead with 11 laps to go in the cross line. Beers going to lead that lap. Austin Beers. He's going to take it away from Ethan Stanley. Ecker going to fight for second now might fight for the lead nope that door gets shut but for how wow. long Eckert's bounce back bounce back right there in Austin beers Neil Rutt in the YouTube yeah. chat saying I'm watching currently from I-95 uh, cheering on the 66 and the 19 hopefully you're not driving I was gonna <laughs> say eyes on the road You're just going to get drink. tight on the bottom there. It's going to be side by side again for this lead. Man, what great racing we've seen tonight so far in heat number one. Agreed. Man, power. Oh, Hackathorn. I think he took a toe. I think Hackathorn oh, no. may have just crashed out. Would you guys oh, go ahead man. and take over while I try to pull up a replay? They're side by side again. It feels like, I mean, ever since the drop of the green flag, been side by side all night, but Ethan Stanley. Oh man! Ever since this. Oh, oh, oh. Is, well, let's let's it's while they're battling side by side. Here's a replay of what happened to Matt Hackathorn. Uh oh. Oh no. A little off-road adventure. Oh no. Um, oh oh man! A hellacious hit. Upside, Jesus. That's a career ender right there. I need yeah. your word of the day calendar. It's a hard hit. I'm not quite sure what happened. I, I don't know if maybe some mechanical issue in real oh. life. I mean, someone got loose off the back straightaway there, and they are still side by side for that lead. None of them given an inch here. And why should they with eight laps to go? Austin Beers, though, man, fighting tough on that inside. Fully capitalizing on, on that caution, the way it fell out for him. I mean, he's not giving it up. Look like old. Mm. He got a break there. I mean, I think Ethan could have uh, powered up there, but thought better of it. I do think Ethan may have the better car here late in the run. We have, we'll have to see if he can get back by that 19, though. There's some trap laughing up well ahead. Very strong. Who is that? Might be Alex Kenton. No, it's not Alex Kenton. It is Ray Bracey. Ray Bracey. And he gets off the track. He's going to let the leaders fight it out. Thank you, Ray. These drivers were side by side for pretty much all of the, from the last restart up until the last lap. Now that Austin Beers has claimed the lead by himself, I think Ethan Stanley may be having a connection issue. Oh. It's hit the wall. Oh. 
Yeah. Trying to get all he can. I think Ethan is starting to drive the tires off it at this point, side by side for second now. Wow. Not what I expected at all. I thought, you know, Ethan was just going to pace himself and really take this one back. But Austin Beers, maybe pull it away. Yeah. I wonder, Races. I mean, I, he must Oh, someone off on the back straightaway there. I believe that is, uh, can't quite see. You know, it's Drew Eisenman who is pulling off the track. It looks like he may have some some issues here as he looks like he's looks like he's heading down pier road man race i mean that 17 looks so strong this whole race but it seemed like that last caution kind of turned everything upside down obviously he was fighting for the lead with that 19 and i mean i have to imagine he burned his stuff up now doing a little bit of blinking here agreed you know i really felt like he was managing his tires the best this whole race and i really thought he was just going to let him pace you know gave beers the favor on exit of two but no, Austin Beers locked in, and then unfortunately got a little bit of the walls, did Ethan Stanley, and what a shakeup here late in this one. It looks like he's also kind of checking up the drivers behind them. It's very hard to pass in this track once the tires start to wear out, and he's got a whole line of Hunky Hornets right there trying to get past him we right now. might have 4 wide coming off. Turn two, we are in the red. Oh, the no. The 21 around, Thomas Capuano, another car in the inside wall there, entering three. That was 15 of DJ Weeks. Looks like oh, those man. that may have been the only two, oh. at least there. I think someone got squeezed into the wall there. Go back this will change back. a lot. Let's quickly pull up a replay. Maybe see if we get some green flag pit stops. If we do, then we'll go ahead and switch it back on over. But heavy damage to a lot of drivers. Oh, oh man! Wow. <laughs> Major air time. Oh. Driver side hit, that's a career ender. <laughs> Someone get this man an, like, an, a, a pilot's license. <laughs> Someone get this guy a replacement driver. Because he passed away, not because he's not stage. Wow, that 20. Oh man, the 27 car. Almost did a great job, Adam Peeler. But oh, uh, did Peeler sacrifice himself to him. not hit another driver? I think he did, yeah. He almost missed that 21. Well, he did, and then got hit from, I think, either the side or behind. Better man well, than me. I'm on board here with Peeler. The drivers are all choosing to stay out. We're oh. not showing this over because we're looking at the replays. Wow! Oh, he got hit oh. by somebody. Got a hit. Oh, oh man! It's a 54. 54. Yeah. Here's Rashid's coal. The wreck is up ahead. That could have been so much worse. That car cutting across the track like that. She was locking it down, couldn't do anything with the 27 there. Sort of met in the middle there, one coming up, one going down. Be going on board. Let's go on board with the me fine machine. Let's see if he was me fine or me no fine. Got the front row seat to this. I mean, what do you do right here? He slams on the Back brake down. like Watch any smart driver does. Oh, watch that bumper. Oh. The, oh. <laughs> Holy cow, man! Wow. Ah, just a little, just a little kiss. Yeah, he'll be okay. So <laughs> un besito. Me fine. Zach Evans. He he was one of the drivers that did elect to go down Pier Road. I mean, they, they, not a bad idea. You're already kind of back there. Let's uh, let's take a look at last lap since pit. Your top twelve all went down pit road on lap 27 we're currently on lap 49 about to cross into lap 50 turn that off uh then jordan torbo and rasheed coles went down on lap 34 so slightly fresher tires not too bad ty mcintosh and back zach e and back zach evans uh gilberto javier gomero wester green peeler and kenton have all gone down pit road on lap 49 uh, rasheed coles are also currently in pit road right now so uh from from Ty McIntosh and back, their driver's on the freshest set of tires. That's 14th place. Let's see if that's enough. It's going to be a green-white checkered. The first of two attempts. Uh, make sure I get that right. It is definitely two attempts. Yep, two, two green-white checkered attempts is the first of two attempts. Um, and, you know, hopefully we don't need a second one. But if, if we do, you could be seeing some of these drivers us at the top 10 climbing their way into it. Yeah, I believe so. I was gonna say I think that's probably what they're gonna those uh, guys that pitted. Um, 
from 14th on back will need. Um, they're not going to be able to make it up all the way to the front, I don't think, but definitely going to be interesting to see. They're definitely going to make up positions. It's just going to be a question of how much. Now, race, I mean, that 17 seemed to lo lose it on that last restart. I know it's only going to be a green-white share, but what do you think he's got for this restart? It's very interesting, you know, because we thought Johnny Eckert was going to fall down the field, but here he is, P2 on the outside, which has been looking pretty sketchy, but pretty competitive. Interesting to see if Ethan Stanley is going to start on the inside, right behind Austin Beers. A lot of interesting things playing out in this here restart. Is it the final one? I don't know. All right, Kern, something new for this season by just sheer coincidence. We now have a thing called Lonely Chevy Watch, where we try to See where the one and only Chevy driver in this league is currently at. Jordan Tarble, only Chevy, in 13th place. Still find it shocking. There's only one Chevy. That, I, mean, I had no idea rare. either. Yeah. Right. That's got to be a stat. Like, there's no, that's got to be a rare stat to have <laughs> one Chevrolet. And this is a big field of cars, like almost 30 cars. And there's one Chevrolet. That is, oh, wow. There, there's, been, of, yeah. there's been a couple of races where we've had two. And a couple of races where we've had none. Wow. None is actually insane. A lot of good-looking dark horses and supers out there to make up the field, so. Yep. Ford sure did update that nose. Like in the <laughs> super. <laughs> yeah. Ford did. It's like got the, the, that is a fact. Random gray underneath the, the lights there, you know. One of the design choices of all time. For sure. Well, as you guys have said, we got two restart or two green white checkers to decide it. We'll see if we only need one here for this first heat. It's going to be Austin Beers who chooses the outside who will lead them to the green here. Johnny Eckert's been strong this first for, or this whole first heat. He's going to be starting second. Darren Staff in third and Ethan Stanley in fourth. Going to see how this plays out. Pace truck is off. They will face the green flag. Two laps to go to decide it. Austin Beers a great restart. A great restart indeed. I mean, clear nearly two car lengths going down here into one. The fight will be on for third here between Ethan Stanley and Darren Staff. Ethan looks like he has it. Can he clear Darren? He will down the back. Darren going to get to the inside there. Crossover. Oh. If I'm Austin, I'm praying for a green flag race right here. He's done everything right. And I think they're going to get it. They're going to face the white flag here. And they will take it. One more to go for Austin Beers. He's got a hungry Johnny Eckert just behind, trying to add one more win to the winningest driver in Oska. Driving it into one. He's going to have a great run off turn two here. Can he do anything down the back? Big run. Going to give him Big the outside block. to the inside. Going to wow. run out of time here. Austin Beer is going to win the first here tonight. Going to be a hectic finish there for heat number one. And they're going to wreck down the front straightaway. The 13 gets turned off the front bumper. Couldn't catch the number there. It looked like a simple slide. Nice, clean what finish a to a fantastic race. Absolutely. Agreed. We'd love to see that. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Stood on business. Regularly races modifieds out there. So he's got he's got the skills to get up there in the front. That's awesome. If you race modifieds in real life, you know, I ain't got nothing to say to you. You probably beat me up. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well so oh, yeah, uh Neil Rutt in the in the YouTube chat saying uh do good motorsports one two finish. I have Johnny Eckert here as outlaw racing, but I think that's because from a previous season so yeah uh, johnny eckert in too good uh in the number 66 did a fantastic job for that let's go ahead while we're currently in the warm-up session let's take a look at the actual finishing results then maybe we'll we'll give out our race picks so uh austin beers congratulations johnny eckert's do good more sports one two just need to forget about that for a second um ethan stanley blinking at the end there so a little a little bit of concern, but finished off a beautiful third place finish. Smacked the wall, gave, giving me plenty of points, though, at the end. So I'm happy for Ethan. Darren Staff, one of my drivers, finishing in fourth. Ty McIntosh, fifth. Jake Scarborough in sixth. Dylan Thomas, seventh. Caden Tufts and Zach Evans, eighth and ninth. And Kynan Jones, which um, 
we did not look at his um, BPM too much, finishing in the top 10. Justin, take it away. Yes, sir, I got David Westring, you know, just or finish just outside the top 10 and 11th. Tristan, Tristan uh, Millette going to be in 12th. Gilberto Javier in 13th. Kyle Carson, 14th. Alex Kenton going to round out the top 15th, just outside Tim Conrad in 16th. Richard Garcia in 17th. Adam Peeler in 18th. Rounding out the rest of the field, we got Thomas Capuano. Hope I pronounced that right. Thomas, Capuano. P19. Capuano, Thomas P19. Rashid Coles, P20. Jordan Tarbell, and the only Chevrolet in this 30 car field. P, what's that, 21? Apologies. Dustin yeah. Duer, P22. DJ Weeks, P23. Drew Eisman, unfortunate, P24. Ray Bracey, my bad on the pick, P25. Dave Carpenter, P26. Matt Hackathorn, P27. James Watson, P28. And finally, Ryan Gavel, P29. Should, All uh, right. Should make picks here. Yeah, that's what, exactly what we are going to do. Want to give a, a shout out and a thank you to um, to Binks Designs for not only sponsoring tonight's race, but sponsoring the Binks Design Broadcaster Championship picks. Binks Design is a local New Jersey graphic design company that specializes in all your custom apparels and Tumblr needs. Check out their website at binksdesigns.com dot my shopify.com and you can always find that down below in the description so vic what are who, what's the order race is going first oh, oh race oh. Too, that means that right. your driver did not do good yeah you know if i'm gonna pick you be wary here we got a big what in, it's uh, inverted uh the 23rd position okay wow so with that being said a lot of the pace we saw some caution shaking up you know, I'm thinking, you know what? Hear me out on this one. Big shakeup with the invert. Jordan Tarble and the only Chevrolet going to get it done under the lights. That That is a pick. Um, <laughs> that That is that is a pick. So the uh, the drivers, they want the 66 for half two. No. Uh, their pick did not do well in half one. Uh, Trevor, his pick, uh, he wants the... Can he pick him? Yes, he can. He wants the 17. For oh. half two. I know, all the good picks. I know. Gordon's going to get uh, it back. Goody. Goody's pick. Let's see. He wants... Will Goody go... Can we pick this one? So he's going to double down and go on the 52 again. Justin, you're up next. Ah, oh, man. Um, you know what? I know he's going to be starting dead last pretty much. I think Ryan Gavel had some good speed there. Got some unfortunate luck in that heat one. I think he's going to make his way through this field, get her done there in that number one. Right on. Carlos, who you got? Uh, every single pick has been a pick I wanted to pick. So that's a, that, that's a shame. But I'm actually still confident with the pick I'm going to give out. And I have a feeling got himself a top 10 in the beautiful Me Fine machine. Going to go with Zach Evans on getting me a nice, solid top 10 and half number two. Hey, right on. I uh, I, I like that pick a lot. Um, So I, I know he had some shitty luck in half one. Uh, but I think that he's going to turn it around here. I'm going to go for the 15 of DJ Weeks. A good pick. And that leaves that leaves Cherry's pick. Uh, so Ch Cherry's, uh, the only pick left for Cherry is is his, his dead last pick of, of, and it's a 51. So hopefully he has some better luck than he had in half one. All right. Well, let's see how much time we have remaining in the warm up. Uh, about a minute. Well, he had a couple drivers take time, not really too many drivers. It's uh, a useful time for drivers to go to the bathroom, go get some water, do whatever they have to do. But um, before we continue, I do want to go ahead and uh, shout out Wicken Woodsman for sponsoring the series like they have in the past and hopefully in the future. Thank you so much, Wicken Woodsman. we got a nice, fun video that they have sent us that we're going to play along here. And when we're done, we'll, we'll be back and hopefully back for the grid. Be sure to check out Tim Mayo Conrad and the Weekend Woodsman crew on YouTube. Make sure you hit that like button to get notifications when a new video drops. And check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Enjoy the race.
are back. Once again, I always appreciate Weekend Woodsman for the sponsor each and every week of the series here. About eh, it's wrapping up here. This six-minute warm-up. We we'll see some cars taken to the grid here shortly. Again, in time for um, this second heat going to be a 10 p.m. in sim time so gonna have to see how this track temp adjusts here um not sure it has quite yet for me but it's showing oh pace car almost flipped over <laughs> the truck has arrived a little too excited a 72 degree track temp a difference from 94 that first heat so gonna be interesting to see if uh looseness calms down a little bit but here is your starting lineup dj weeks in that 15 going to be on the pole jordan tarble in third rasheed coles in fourth thomas capuano fifth adam peeler in sixth seventh is richard garcia tim conrad qualified himself in eighth excuse me as i accidentally played on an ice chip uh, Kenton in ninth place with Carlson in 10th. So Carlson had a decent race. Unfortunately, he did not finish the way he wanted it to. Gilberto, Gilberto Javier Gomera in 11th. Tristan Millette in 12th. 13th is going to be David Westergreen. And 14th will be Kynan Jones. We have Zach Evans starting in 15th. Caden Tufts in the 16th spot. Dylan Thomas, your points leader, going to be starting 17th for this heat number two. Jake Scarborough in 18th. Have Ty McIntosh starting 19th, and Dylan, or I'm sorry, Darren Staff going to be rounding out the top 20. In 21st place, yeah. uh, Ethan Stanley, 22nd, Johnny Eckert trying to add into his winningest driver status. Let's see, it'll be interesting to see him trying to climb up from there. Austin Beers. In 23rd, half one winner. 24th, Drew Eisenman. Terrible luck here in half number one. Uh, terrible luck for all the drivers down below, actually. 25th, Ray Bracey. 26th, David Carpenter. And 27th, Hack Matt Hackathorn. 28th, James Watson. And I believe in last place is going to be the number one of Ryan Gavel. And interesting to know, Drew Eisenman did not grid up. So uh, it's uh, uncertain if he's going to be starting tonight or if he just simply missed the um the grid too much damage on that machine appreciate y'all both i can see you can sort by the grid in right now ha. <laughs> <laughs> all right lights are out on the pace truck here be dj weeks in that 15 dustin doer in the 32 your front row we're gonna lead him to the green here pace truck is out another 50 on tap here Waiting for the green. It is out. We are away for heat number two. Good start for that 15. It's like a bit of a calmer start, but just getting into one now. We'll see what they got. Oh, one car on the apron. That is the nine, David Westergreen. I think he just got shuffled out there. Oh. Still going all the way to the back. I'm not sure if he's got an issue or oh. not. Three wide. The only three wide battle, but they are still fighting very tough on this initial start, trying to get all the spots they can. Dustin Dragon Dewar took the lead from uh, DJ Weeks there uh, before they even cross the start finish line. So the 15 will not be leading a lap. Uh, Dustin Dewar has at that first lap, Weeks in second, Tarble third, Garcia fourth, and Peeler currently in fifth. Man, I wish we got that move that Darren Staff made down the back straightaway side by side entering three. Still three wide, but man, he was motoring on that outside into one. And Staff is in third place on the point standings for a reason. He's on the move. Got a place to be. It's called the front. Track temperature is now 22 degrees compared to race one. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no. Oh, man, a hard hit for that 99 to Gilberto. No caution. caution. It's off track. He just barely missed the Jeff Gordon section of the track. Let, let me let me just go on the replay because that was that that he hit a ton. Yeah, tough break. 
that really where it takes me? See what happened. Oh, he got he got on the apron. Ooh, how that wasn't a caution right there. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Dusty Dewar is glad to see there was no caution with that. He is stretched out to 0.8 second lead there. They are fighting for second spot just behind there. 57. Richard Garcia going to take that spot away. Now the fight is on for a third between DJ Weeks and Adam Peeler. Dusty Still. enjoying the clean air. Sort of peeling out here a little bit with this invert. Still a lot of great side-by-side -side racing. Love to see it, man. Quick something to note. Chevy. Dylan Thomas is going down Pear Road. He's got significant damage for the points leader. Interesting development. Because it was multiple seconds back when I noticed him. And he's going down Pear Road right now with significant right side damage. Hate to see it. Hopefully he can uh, get some luck, turn around here, maybe with some cautions later in this race to try and make some spots up, but tough break at the moment. See if I can pull up and uh, what happened there with him. Uh, you guys go ahead and continue to commentate over the race. There's still a lot of side-by-side -side racing down that back straight away. Guys still trying to sort it out here. Like that battle was her fourth. That has sorted out that lone Chevy of Jordan Tarble trying to hang on to that sixth position here. That's sort of where all the, the racing begins here, all that side-by-side -side action. Bit of a gaggle right there. Oh, gaggle okay. To 19. So I saw just what happened to the number 13 of Dylan Thomas. Some contact with a competitor, excuse me, with a competitor, it's got the hiccups there. I'm gonna switch it on over to the multicam, and you can see Gavel up here in the top of the screen. Gets a little bit of contact with the one, and yeah, that sends the car slideways up into the outside wall. He ran it out for, I think, one or two laps, and I think he called it a night. I, I think I see him back out on track here, actually. He's going to try and... Yeah, actually, you're right. Yeah, yeah. coming out now. Oh, I see. He, he got a meatball flag. Ah. No. Hate to see it. As you said, the points leader. Going to be uh, a long second half for him here. To see if he can make any ground up. He had a he relatively is. clean half number one. And usually in, in twin races, one half is usually cleaner than the other. The other tends to be uh, the opposite of what we got. So hopefully that's not the case in this scenario as uh, this track has given us good green flag racing. Let's keep it that way with uh, 10 laps into this race so far. Um, but I'm sure Dylan Thomas right now is hoping for multiple cautions and multiple DNFs to get him a couple more spots up in the standings. Yeah, he's going to need it. You saw it there just a moment ago. He is three laps down at the moment. So definitely going to be hoping for some cautions, or if those don't come, hoping for some guys to, to drop out of the race here to get all he can at this point. Yeah, three wide. I don't think it's going to stay that way exiting the corner, but it's like it'll sort itself out there a little bit. Love the racing we are seeing tonight. Action pretty much everywhere you look, it seems like. Looked three wide for a second there, off turn two, but still side by side down the back straight away. It's going to be the 29, Tristan Millette. I think he'll get clear of that. Garcia hey, is inching towards Dusty there in the lead. He's coming for him. Take a look, the... see what his laps have been the last couple of laps. And yeah, look at that. All, uh, pretty much almost all green for Richard Garcia, gaining uh, small chunks here and there. Um, but he's, he's got a little bit of pace compared to Dustin Dewar. Seems like it's slowed down just a little bit, but as long as you're still gaining a race, that's all that really matters. It can be slow and methodical. It's very early in this race, so still got a lot of time. Agreed. And if you need luck, you know, Vegas might be the place. So really interesting to see how this one shakes up. 
called the groundbreaking caution we had midway through race one. But this one's looking pretty green, pretty racy though. You can really tell the pace is up with the sun down, track temperature down. It's really interesting to see Richard get up there, challenge Dusty. Even up that last lap, but still some work to do. Side-by-side side racing down the back straightaway. First one there, DJ Weeks gets the 21 of Thomas Capuano. He's going to jump underneath the 29. Try and get some momentum down the front. He will not have it. Is that 15 going to get underneath? Push down that front straightaway from the 95 to the 21. Don't look now. There's that 17. Very strong in that first heat, up to 11th, just outside that top 10. Make the moves. Oh, they are three wide back there now. Oh, and no. And there they go. Yeah, there they go. Oh. Trying to put in the middle with the 52. Oh, no, me so fine. Caution. 52 may have kept it out of the wall there. Oh, Ray Bracey in it as well. Oh, 18 Ray. through the grass. Off-road excursion there, 51. James Watson turned around. Dave Westergreen, parallel parking there on the front straightaway. No, da or see some rear end damage, but no contact with that. It's a lot of damage for a lot of these drivers. Yes, it is. Let's see what happened. But yeah, the 18, mm -hmm. nowhere really to go there. And, and unfortunately, 52 got turned around. Lost the bumper pretty quickly there. The car almost side. Oh. Yeah, on board with me right find there. Zach Evans. Man. Oh. Man. Oh, is he going to be fine? I think he's fine. Makes it to right, we got some we got some pit stops happening right now. Let's go ahead and cut it on over to that. And we'll take a look yeah, at some more good. replays. Kind of surprised. They got uh well I mean, I guess not. We're closing in on halfway, so got two sets. Might as well use them. Yeah, I'd say about the time. I mean, we got everybody down pit lane here. Wondering what the wear is like underneath the lights. Yeah. This is, this is going to give uh, Dylan Thomas one of his uh, three laps down uh, back, so he'll find himself two laps down. So I'm sure he's happy for that caution. Uh, Richard Garcia, yeah, winning the race off here. Road, Dustin Dewar, second, Keaton Tubbs, third, Tristan Millette, fourth, and Peeler in fifth. All right, let's take a look at some more uh, of the replay here. So we're going to turn that. Oh, turned it off and on again. There we go. Uh, and let's go. Who else is? Tim Conrad is one of the drivers who got uh, highlighted here. From the wreck. Did a good job, but unfortunately the 14 ran into the back of him, and then the 7 uh, smacked the side of the 14, so that's damage to both of those drivers. Peeler, uh, the lone Chevy, lost the front bumper. That's Man. a rare bumper right there. Yeah, I <laughs> see it. Here's Alex Kenton on board. Oh, is that a rear bumper? Oh, man. I got hit from behind, too. Here's Jordan oh, Tarbles on, boy, uh, on board. There was a little oh, bit of a gap almost. there, but unfortunately it closed up. Yeah, I almost shot that gap. Don't want me picking it. It seemed like, I don't know, it didn't seem like enough contact to lose the front bumper, but obviously it did. It didn't seem that hard, but. Great shot there. Put it out, Benny, or Barney, whatever his name is. <laughs> Benny. <laughs> he is waving. Up in that flag stand, Benny Parsons. Oh, Benny Parsons. Oh, I got this camera angle. Oh, hold up. Rest in peace. We may be cooking oh, here. Be great angle. Yeah. Wow. Crazy the way that bumper gets clipped off like that. <laughs> yeah. Man. It's either devastating or you made it through clean there. That 57 of Richard Garcia did win the race off pit road. Oh. It was really close, but he did. I was going to say edge him, but that could be taken out of context. But I already said Ooh. it anyway, so. Ray, Ray, yeah, like, you, you, you stopped yourself, but then you uh, you made it worse. All right, Ray Bracey's request yeah. is on board. 
Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Ray Bracey's on board. He did get a little bit of uh, damage there, but I think overall he's going to be okay. The Bojo car here. Got the eyes. Got the Ochen looking at you guys. Imagine that in your rear view. Really quick. Oh, 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 wow. Wow. He made a little contact, but definitely. Yeah, have a code good. brown here. Yep. <laughs> Get that cat some new pants. Don't wear them. But, you know, I have some drivers up in the YouTube chat as we do. We are one to green, by the way. Um, trademark cast saying proud. I would have I would have got the W if the 19 would have fallen to me, but I'm just too good now and didn't get him. Uh, also shouting out uh, me fine with a top 10 finish. A good work by Evans uh, and then James M. Racing saying shame. These cars don't have better brakes. These uh, Agreed, speedway James. packages, it's a little bit harder to slow down, but yeah. Race control, we'll take a look over, see if anybody uh, needs to be getting any penalties for maybe any potential arc of breaking. I don't think I've seen anything, uh, that, at least anything outrageous. It's mostly been just drivers not really expecting where other drivers are going to end up. And being off the throttle, so that, that's that's the key factor for me if I determine arc of breaking. Are you on or off the throttle? Uh, yeah. Happens quick here. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. All right. The pace truck going to pull off here again. Going to be going green on lap 20. That 57 was slowly working his way to the front before that caution. Going to have the lead on this restart. See what we can do. Ooh. Green flag is out. We're away. Good restart. And easily clear entering one. We're gonna see three wide again into one. We are gonna we'll work it out quickly. So racy on these restarts, man. I love to see it. Leaders have been getting away good on these restarts, but back in the pack, yeah. I mean, you're right. Two and three wide for several laps. Oh, wow, big moment there for the 27. Almost the ball oh, oh. keeps out. 19, I, I, I thought he was about to wreck there, but looks like he was just trying to get maybe a little bit of a side drive from the 73. Getting pretty close there. Speaking of 73, let's beers. let's see what his uh what his uh, uh BPM is right now. If I can pull, find up his webcam, there we go. Currently 141, the highest we've seen all night so far. Wow, locked in. Middle of a bit pack, so a lot going on. Love to see that. I've never seen someone use that night or sim racing in general before. That's great. See, so got one of those whoop. There it is, bands on. <laughs> I what? forgot. I forgot about that. Tim Conrad, I believe, is in pit road right now. Uh, I don't know why, but he's in pit road. Currently, your uh, drivers on the track. They're uh, a lap down or more. Is Zach Evans one lap down, and Dylan Thomas two laps down. So I'm sure that Thomas now wants even more cautions because the next caution it will be for Zach Evans getting the. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Zach Evans will be getting the free pass if he's not involved. Man, I'll tell you what. Dusty Dewar went from leading that race from before that first caution. Once the restart happened, he's been falling pretty quick in the middle of a pretty good battle there. Went from second. He's back now to seventh since the restart. So losing spots. Who's in the top ten? To, yeah, trying to hang on as quick as he can here. Hey, one guy again, slowly making his way to the front. I guess two guys, really, Ethan Stanley, Austin Beers, up to fifth and sixth, respectively. Two front guys in the middle are in that first heat, trying to get their way back up there in the second. Christian Millette in that fourth spot. You see a big gaggle there. Yeah, Austin Boy. Beers currently the biggest mover of half number two so far, as we got a battle for the lead. Richard Garcia, Caden Tufts going at it, side by side, entering turn one. Battle still. She's going to get the edge off turn two. Looks like it'll be that 57 to Garcia. Yep. Highline looking a little stronger here under the lights. Getting a good run coming off these corners. Yep. That momentum paying off. As quickly as they were side by side, back to single file down the front straightaway. Like Thomas Capuano and Darren Staff going at it there in the back. 
for 12th place. And you mentioned earlier uh, Austin Pierce, Ethan Stanley, 5th and 6th. Now Johnny Eckert, who was 10th at the time you, you mentioned them, is now right behind them in 7th. So hopefully he learned from kind of pushing a little too hard in half number 1. Uh, and has dialed it back a little bit. It looks like he's hanging on here right now with 25 laps remaining. Yeah, that was going to be the one of the things I was curious about, and obviously that seems to be the case. Obviously, uh, the most winningest driver in Osco, so I figured that would be the case. Probably just uh, a little bit too hard too early in that first one. And figuring it out here under the lights. Most winningest driver in Osco also has the most embarrassing moment in Osco history. Oh? Yeah, you, I'm sure you've seen the GIF around uh, there, Justin. Uh, race, you probably have no idea, but there's a, there was a moment back uh, in, in Atlanta with, uh, I think it was the trucks, uh, during the pacing for half number two. Um, I did not see this uh, on the broadcast live. It, it, we, we, I was not showcasing his car. Uh, from the lead, he spun himself out while pacing for, for the initial green. We didn't catch it. He won the race, and then while he was in the interview, he was boasting about how I didn't catch his spin and tap off the wall. <laughs> I think I've seen this short. Yeah, and uh, lo and behold, he gave me just enough time for me to find that part of the replay and call him out on it. Yeah, yeah I would have just kept out. quiet. Yeah, yeah you should have kept quiet. Nothing. No one saw that. Uh, in, in the broadcast chat, uh, I'm going to put that GIF out there for you. Just uh, give me a moment. I'll tell you what, we are talking about Johnny Eckert falling his way up. He is slowly falling back into this big pack of cars that we have going at it here. That's going to be for 7th is where that starts. Wrong one. In front of Kynan Jones at the moment, but change pretty quickly here as all those guys trying to get as much spots as they can. There it is. Uh, race, I sent it to you. All right, but since the battle for lead has died down a little bit, Garcia and Tufts no longer side by side as Tufts has relinquished the uh, battle attempt here now currently. Maybe trying to save some tires here with 20 laps to go. Plenty of time to really kill your tires. Um, and it's long enough where, where, where tire saving is still a key factor in this race. Uh, with Ty McIntosh in third, that's kind of your top three drivers who have kind of pulled away there from Tristan Millette, who is now in fourth. Uh, Justin, uh, excuse me, Austin Beers in fifth, Ethan Stanley sixth, Johnny Eckert still in seventh. That thing's kind of been the same. They kind of stalled out here for the time being. Kyan Jones battling side by side with DJ Weeks for the eighth place spot as uh, Dustin Dewar from starting at the pole uh, for the half two invert, uh, due to the half two invert now has dropped down to 10th place. Biggest mover of the night in half number two so far, Austin Beers plus 18, uh, followed by Ty McIntosh plus 16. Wow, plus 16. wonder what that does to the tires you know I was looking at Austin Beers looked really competitive all the way up to P5 and now you got old Ethan Stanley right on his bumper wondering what those tires are looking like and plenty of laps to go like you said Carlos I mean about 20 to go 18 to go here that's a lot of running a lot of miles yeah and you mentioned Ty McIntosh plus 16 spots looking like he's trying to make a run here or at least trying to put it together here on Caden Tufts doesn't happen in one corner but he has had speed, obviously, up 16 spots and looking to get to the nose underneath. Not going to get it there, but I think it's, uh, it's going to start happening. Of course, we enter one here. It's a matter of time. Great right. run by the <laughs> That's awesome. P16. Or, excuse me, 16 spots gained at the P3. <laughs> They're battling for the lead. Yeah, so it's currently the currently Eisen Tech Enterprises Week in Woodsman Racing and Shift Esports. One, two, three. RK Motorsports fourth, and then do good. Uh, two good motorsports in fifth, Lake Norman in sixth, Outlaw Racing, oh, excuse me, uh, that's not Outlaw Racing, that's also do good. So do good in seventh is the first uh, repeat uh, driver, so probably might be looking pretty good in, in the um, team points uh, after this night is over. They had a 1-2 finish already in the, in the first half. Got pretty close off turn two between Ty and Caden there. Ty going to get the spot, so make that plus 17 on heat number two. Going after the lead now. Kind of Jones. Going after DJ Weeks. Can we for the A spot. James M. Racing saying, can we get webcam footage of the boys in the booth? Um, 
No, not right now. <laughs> not right now. You know, I have thought about doing that, um, but it's um, it's not that it's hard. It's just that um, um, uh, the effort for me to look good um, is almost impossible. Oh, yeah. Carlos, no. I will not hear that. Most handsome, if not the most handsome, sim racing oh. broadcaster I ever did see. <laughs> Millet and Beers side by side. Uh, battling for that uh, fourth place position as uh, Beers is now attacking Millet there uh, as uh, number 29 doing, having, having himself a very good second half run. Yes, he is. Going to lose that spot, looking like maybe two to that 17. In Stanley, but no surprise, those guards have been fast all night. They make their way up to the front. But as you said, definitely uh, a good run here for Tristan Millet. Still holding on to a good spot here. As we close down on this race, only 13 laps to go. It's been flying by in a hurry with all this great racing we've been seeing. It really has. And like you said earlier, Justin, real racy. You just tell the pace is really picked up. Real dicey. A lot of good moves being made. Crossing. Oh, over. no. I really like the one I'm seeing. Uh-oh. And Darren Staff pounded that outside wall in a battle for 11th place spot. Going to relinquish that 11th position to the number 21, uh, Thomas Capuano. And maybe we'll do the same thing with Ray Bracey. As uh, he really smacked that hard. Yeah. Going to have to rebuild, those, or rebuild that momentum now. Uh, James Watson, uh, excuse me, James M. Racing asking uh, what is the fuel run length in these vehicles. Um, normally we get that information. I think we did. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and we take it away as I try to figure that out. Oh, you have it? I got you, yeah. Look, James, the fuel window here is looking about 32 to 36 laps. Probably depends on the lane you're running. So, I don't, um, are we going to roll in some green flag pit stops here? I'm not quite sure. I'm honestly a little no, bit I don't think so. Too, Okay, cool, cool. The driver's last one down pit road on lap 16. This is a 50 lap race. So they've been going at it for 20 odd laps, I think. It's going to get tight right there. You yeah, see my that battle between there. the 19 and the 17. That's all right. I think we're at a point now where you can throw a few numbers out the window. I've tossed them. Oh, no! Contact 66 oh, in the wall! Man, the involved. 66. Oh, and that's not going to oh, be Oh, 32 man. involved. The other RKM driver, 45, third place in points, Darren Staff involved as well. Heavy, significant damage to the 29 and the 66. They, their races are both possibly done. Oh, yeah. yeah, meatball flags for them. Oh. Heck of a hit. Hey, Changes see everything. That 29 too. Agreed. Uh, it's one of my, two of my drivers involved oh. with the hit up this picture. Oh, man. Oh, that's me in my room right now. All right, let's go ahead and pull up the replay here. Let's go with uh, Johnny Eckert's view here. Yeah, it's going to be a... Uh... Hang on. Man! Oh, huge hit, unfortunate for Johnny Eckert. Fast all by. Yeah. Now, yeah, I think he just comes up the track a little bit. Unfortunately, that 29 holds him down tight. I'm trying to get as much of a run as he can on that 66 exit in the corner. And... Fighting for spots in the end of the race as we have pit stops going on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll take a look at some more replays afterwards. Now this will be the money stop. No mistakes. No mistakes, no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going for. I'm glad that you said it better than I did. I, th I think <laughs> of what you're putting down is that 57. <laughs> Putting down another good pit stop. I'm gonna get out first. Not much changes up at the front, it looks like. Now, at least on this restart, I know that 57 and the 95 have been fast, but I think on this restart race, and I don't know about you, uh, I think my eyes are gonna be on that second row with that 19 and 17. They've been kind of the class of the field for the night as well. Before we get to that, let's take a look at again what happened here. I think you're just gonna see, yeah. Uh, did the 66 go up or did the 29 come down or was it a mixture of both? I mean, I've seen another angle. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the 66 came up a little bit, but at the same time, you're racing hard and you're coming towards the end of the race, you know. I think that's really just more of a, a racing deal there. I, think I, I would classify it as a racing a deal. Bit. Yeah. 
came up a little bit, but again, that, I mean, that's two guys fighting hard for uh, top 10 spots. So, I mean, come down to the end of the race. Yeah, nothing egregious. That's just like you said, hard race. But also, like you said, just... Go on board with the 45. Actually, let's let's go on board with Johnny Eckerd, uh, Gyro Cam. See how hard of a hit that was from the from the end car view. Oh, you can actually hear him get off the mm -hmm. throttle too. I think the car was definitely pushing up. That's a career ender. Three of them tonight, man. Ain't got enough replacement drivers. Go. Uh, on board with Darren's staff. I think he made contact with the driver um, checking up. See, the incident's gonna be happening all the way up here. Oh, I, I hate to oh, say this for yeah. my driver. I think that may be an arc break incident there for Darren's staff. Yeah, yeah I'm not an official, but it looks pretty quick, but. Take a look. Well, let's let's go back into the live feed. We have uh, we're going to be hitting one to green this time. Bye. Um, we start with six laps remaining. Now you guys were talking about how you guys who you guys are thinking is going to be able to pull this off. We have a lot of hot shots up here. Garcia, McIntosh, Beer, Stanley, Tufts. I have a feeling that McIntosh may have something for all these drivers. Yeah, mm. I think so, too. And I mean, like I said, though, that 57 and 95, well, really 57 from the drop of the green on this uh, this second heat. I mean, he's been up front, obviously, um, since that second restart, been the leader. But again, I mean, that 1917 been working their way through the field this whole second heat. I, uh, I'm i thinking they may have some good speed here for this um, restart. I agree. A lot of interesting storylines in the top four. Clean air for Richard plus 17 spots for Ty, and then potential rematch between Austin Beers and Ethan Stanley in the second row. Got a lot to look at at this restart. Like you said, a lot of storylines. So it's going to be very interesting in a short amount of time. These guys are going to have to get it done. All right. Well... Again, we'll set the field. Richard Garcia, Ty McIntosh, front row there. Then Austin Beers, Ethan Stanley, row two. Caden Tufts, Kynan Jones in row three. Going to have six laps to decide it. We're going to have another overtime finish. We will find out. Green flag is out. Six laps to go to settle it to Vegas. Inside line strong all night on the restarts. Yes, sir. Look at that, 19 to P2. Not a fantastic restart for that 95 time Macintosh, but still got some time. I'm Austin, all I'm thinking. Oh, oh, oh who was that? that? It was a 13. 13. Somebody's dying in the back. And he's it took a toe. Green. That was the 13 of Dylan Thomas, unfortunately, the points leader. The bad night gone worse. Yes, sir. As the race is on for second. 19, Austin Beers trying to make the move on that 57. Going to have a lot of momentum down the back. Obviously, that all night, that high side been prevailing. But 57 takes it to the bottom. Not a whole lot of momentum from that 19. He's going to be under fire, I think, here in a little bit from that 95 time McIntosh. The rotation on that 57 was really good in three and four. Pulled away a couple car lengths, but now the draft is helping Beers and McIntosh catch back up a little bit. Nice what a that performance. Is 57 been strong all night? Looking to close it out. Anybody pick the uh, the 57 to win tonight? I don't think so. I didn't. Sure wasn't me. We're all losing out here. <laughs> Three laps to go to settle it. 57 up front, but I mean, it's a battle from second back to fifth here, all on top of each other here. That is not over at all. And if they get to side-by-side -side racing, I mean, that 57, Richard gonna love to see that. 
Agreed. He's looking good out front. Thought Austin Beers might start to start to work on a run on the inside, but Garcia pulls ahead, and you got Ty McIntosh right there in his rear end. Really interesting. Who to go? 17. Ethan Stanley all over the back bumper of Caden Tufts. He's going to simmer down for a little bit. I think he's going to try and cross under here, exiting two. Not going to have enough momentum. Uh-oh, in the back looking a little yep. loose. Hold on to it, looks like. Looks like they all hang on. Just have to make it around to the front straightaway here. And that's all Richard Garcia wants to see is that white flag. But that 19, not too far behind. One lap to go here at Vegas. How's it going to finish out? It's a little bit of dirt from Richard Garcia. The front sets there, one to go. 19 took it to the top, trying to get all the momentum he can. He's going to be side by side, maybe with Ty. Not quite going to dive it down into three. All he's got. And going to be one spot short. Richard Garcia, dominant heat two. He's going to take the win. Barely, man. That got close at the front straightaway oh, there. That, that wow. was almost a bad move by Garcia. Yeah. That happened so his, fast. Yeah, wanted to celebrate with the fans, the flagmen. Chose, and almost chose the, the longest portion of the, of the track he could choose while Beers chose the shortest one. And... Uh, if 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 Garcia had lost that race because of that, that, that just would have sucked. But uh, he didn't. He got the win uh, by 1.3 tenths of a second. Uh, and uh, he's going to be celebrating tonight. And, and Beers will not be winning, uh, will not be sweeping both of these races. Put the broom up. Just going to burn it down. It's for the fans right here. Congratulations to Eisen Tech Enterprise for winning half number two with Richard Garcia, number 57, rookie driver to Oska. Strong run, too. Talked about it once he got that lead from that first restart. Pretty much lights out after that. Obviously, had some hard charges behind, but held off the challenge. Austin Beers, yeah, celebrating one half number one. Didn't get a chance to do burnout, so he's doing some right now. I apologize to Beers. I, I completely did not see that he was doing that. Otherwise, I would have showcased him as well. But uh, Beers celebrating clean car, both of these drivers, finishing one, two in uh, the second half. Tim McIntosh, third place finish. Uh, Ethan Stanley, fourth. Keenan Tufts in fifth. Why don't we go ahead and pull up the final race results? For half number two, as I uh, couldn't get out a word there for a second. That's right. Words are tough, and it is going to be Richard Garcia with the win, as he's going to do doing burnouts with the winner of Heat 1 there. Well, I thought so. Um, either yeah. way, Richard Garcia going to be your winner. Austin Beers in second. Ty McIntosh going to finish out in third. Ethan Stanley in fourth. Caden Tufts rounds out the top five. Then DJ Week sixth. Kynan Jones in seventh. Thomas Capuano in eighth. Kyle Carson in ninth. Ray Bracey going to round out the top 10. Adam Peeler in P11. Jake Scarborough in P12. Matt Hackett throwing a good comeback. P13. David Westergreen P14. Darren Staff P15. James Watson P16. Zach Evans P17. Ryan Gavel P18. Rashid Coles P19. And Dusty Dewar P20. Some doer. Doer. <laughs> Not French. Doer. Yeah. That's right. Dave Carpenter going to be in 22nd. Jordan Tarble in... I'm sorry. Dave Carpenter in 21st. Jordan Tarble in 22nd. Got ahead of myself. Uh, Dylan Thomas... Or I'm sorry. Tristan Millette, 23rd. Dylan Thomas, your points leader. Rough Knight, 24th. Johnny Eckert as well, 25th. Uh, Tim Conrad, 26th. Alex Kenton in 27th. Gilberto Javier in 28th. And Drew Eisman going to round out the field in 29th. Don't believe Drew actually make it to, made it to the track in the second heat here. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's why his name is not showing up. That's right. Honorable mention. <laughs> Honorable mention. Yeah, it did not start, unfortunately. Um, so why don't we go ahead and bring up half one winner, um, Austin Beers, and we're going to let you guys go ahead and take it away. Oh. That was good. Austin Beers, it is Justin Kolb and Race Clark in the uh, booth here. You got us? I got you loud and clear. Man, well... Won the first half there. I mean, just a stellar night. One half number one. Almost made it a sweep there. I'm sure you had your work cut out for you in Heat 2, but, I mean, it looked like you had a fantastic car for much of the race here tonight in both. 
Yeah, definitely had a really good car thanks to the boys back at the shop. Um, no, but I, I think I've, I've really uh, improved on saving tires, and uh, that's kind of what got me there. Like, Johnny was in our call tonight, and I actually saved tires better than him, So, and he's one of those guys I kind of modeled my racing on here after. So, uh, you know, to save tires a little bit better than him, that's, that's a pretty cool achievement in itself. But, you know, like I said, really good night for us, good points day. Um, congrats to Richard on the win in, in half number two. That was really fun. But, uh, you know, would have liked to get the broom out. But, uh, you know, a first and second isn't bad. That's right. And one more quick question for me, then I'll let race take over. I mean, that uh, that whole second run, obviously the invert put you in the back there. Just kind of talk me through how patient you had to be. You know, you talked about tire wear here, just how methodically you had to be saving that to make it all the way back up to second. I'm sure that was quite the challenge. Yeah, well, it definitely was. Um, uh, I, I wanted to just get some spots early while the tires were still fresh, uh, get inside like the top 15, and I was able to do that pretty uh, pretty quickly and then rode around for a little bit, and then the top four from the, from race number one, we were all stacked together there just outside the top 10 before the first yellow, so it was kind of funny. Just We all kind of had different paths getting up there and, and different speeds to get there, but we all still found each other, and then, um, you know, just... Just save, 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 and then we got that uh, that yellow there, and tires were still pretty good. I was thinking about taking two, but ended up taking four, which was the right call, and and then uh, made it made our way up to third, and then got that last yellow. Uh, I think it was really tough uh, with running with Ethan. You know, he's he's really fast, and all I was trying to do was try to keep the air out of off his nose, uh, so he'd be tight behind me, and. Uh, <laughs> It was kind of tough for him. I'm sure it was uh, frustrating uh, behind me there for a while, the way I was racing. But you know, he's a, he's a really good, really good driver, and uh, just happy to, like I said, happy to get a first and second. That's awesome. Great run, Austin. Only one question for me: coming to the green there in that final restart. Are you thinking about the sweep, or are you just locked in, ready to finish this one out? It's kind of telling the guys get the broom ready, uh, find it, because <laughs> uh, we might need it here. But no, I, I knew Richard would be fast and and tie. And, uh, you know, Ethan and Tufts behind, but uh, just I think I, I would have had a better shot. I kind of figured something out in turn one with the two to go. Just I was flat out on the top and was starting to get runs on them. And then uh, in the one, I kind of entered a little low trying to show my nose to maybe make him go to the bottom a little earlier. Um, just looking in his mirror, but it ended up getting me tight. So uh, unfortunate that we couldn't get the sweep, but, you know, like I said again, first and second isn't too bad. Agreed. Great win in race one. Great run. Thank you. All right, and that was your half number one winner, Austin Beers. Let me go ahead and bring in uh, the half number two winner, and that's going to be Richard Garcia. Let me just go ahead and clear some things out here first and bring him on up. There he is, boys. Take it away. Uh, hey, Richard, it is Justin and Race up in the booth. Do you got a copy? I got a copy. How you doing, guys? We are doing good. Probably not as good as you, man. That uh, that whole second heat, that uh, that looked like the Richard Garcia show since the uh, the second, or I'm sorry, the first restart there. Once you got ahead of Dustin Dewar there, it seemed like it was pretty lights out. Obviously had some challengers behind you, but, man, you uh, lived up to the challenge and took home the checkered flag. Talk me through it. Yeah. Uh, it was a good second half. Uh, you know, once, once we got the lead, it was just about managing and uh, just keeping it, but not drive away and overuse uh, overuse those tires. Just kind of pace myself. Um, yeah, it was it was a good uh, good second half, um, which made up for the uh, abysmal first half. Good stuff. That uh, that final restart. Um, any real concern with the guys behind, or were you just locked in at that point, ready to go and uh, finish it off? No, just locked in, ready to go. Uh, uh, to keep Austin no. behind me. It's, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Buttons all screwed up. Uh, yeah, I, I knew what I needed to do to uh, keep Austin behind me, um, and I just executed perfectly and uh, you know ran where I needed to and dirtied up his air and just kept it wound up up top. Well, good stuff. Race, what do you got? Not much for me, Richard. Congrats on the win. Just really curious. So, you know, the track temp dropped 22 degrees between race one and race two. Was that a big difference when you were out there racing under the lights for race two? Or is it the track position that you really like in or maybe a combination of both or maybe neither? 
Uh, yeah, temps, the dropping temperature helped a ton. Uh, it just felt like there was there's so much more grip than there was in race one. Um, and that was uh, that was actually a nice relief because that race first race was uh, a bit tough. It was, the car went from wanting to spin out uh, to wanting to knock down the wall uh, that first heat. Well, that's deal. awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the show. All right. Now, uh, any uh, anytime. Yeah. Thank you so much, Richard. Congrats on the win. Now, I want to go. Oh, hold on. Excuse me, Richard. What I forgot about? to ask you. Um, Richard, do you have any shout outs you want to give up? Uh, it's, uh, race control. You're just doing a kick ass job. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Thank you so much. Um, now I do want to apologize to Johnny Eckert, who was in the, uh, infield care center for a while. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of, uh, do him right but bringing him on up to uh interview waiting um and bringing him in, into the booth so johnny i do apologize for missing you i just i dropped the ball completely forgot to look uh unfortunately johnny you did not get you did not get the finish that you wanted why don't you go ahead and give us your take on how the night went for you and maybe what happened there in that final wreck yeah it was good when you're up front but when, you, when you're stuck behind people who are you know similar speeds or whatever it's just it's hard to race here um but yeah i mean race one went really well and it was good to to run up front and, and to race for it and i feel like the cautions came out at interesting times in race one where i was starting i had good speed early but burned my tires up as the run went on it just like it just got worse and worse so the caution came out we it was kind of like a reset and adjusted my driving a little bit and was able to run up front again but Man, when the nighttime hit, it was just a stalemate. Like the whole field, it was the field was stuck behind one or two cars, and every, no one else could do anything. It seemed like, and then it got just that little bit worse because anybody who's running a lane and a half, or you know, about a lane off the bottom, uh, if they were running the middle, you could hold anybody who's trying to make a pass the inside off. So it's really, really frustrating second half, but overall, just the just a difficult night of racing. All right, thank you, uh, Justin. Race, you guys have any questions for um, uh, the winningest Oska driver in uh, Oska history? Man, you uh, you pretty much answered most of my questions that I had. Definitely uh, a tough break. Looked like a, definitely a, a fast car. I hate to see it, but uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure it won't be too long before you start add some more wins to the the winningest total here. Um, I guess. I think you kind of elaborated on it, but I mean, just kind of talk us through the difference between heat one and heat two with the, the tire difference. Obviously heat one um, saw it early there, had to really take care of the tires. And it seemed like maybe there wasn't too much of that in heat number two with the drastic change. No, nah, I don't know. It race one, it felt like the heat was, I don't even know how, how hot it was, but it didn't, didn't seem like there was a whole lot to, um, like you had to protect yourself just a little bit. If you ran five, six laps on the outside, you would feel it. But two, three laps after that, so um, race the uh, race two, which is the temp cooled off so bad, so much. I don't say it's so bad. It, just, it felt like it it cooled off. I don't know what the exact numbers were, but um, it just felt like you just kind of stuck. And you know, there was a lot of give and take up to a point. But once you got to that point, it was like everybody for themselves and. There were a couple incidents that were a little bit over the top, maybe, but, um, you know, things happen, and <laughs> I guess part of it is just the aggression of, uh, of the racing that we get from, from the temperature. For sure. And uh, just to give you those numbers, the track went from a 94-degree um, temp in Heat 1 to 72 in that second, so definitely a big jump. Race, you got oh, yeah. anything? Nothing for me, Johnny. Unfortunate luck, but with those stats, you'll be back on top here soon. Yeah, yeah, I just feel bad for the '66 guys and the rest of the, the rest of the team because we had a we had good speed and myself and Beers were really making hay at one point and yeah, just unfortunate that two races got ruined like that. But it is what it is. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep on fighting and 
I'll hand the keys back over to Neil when, uh, <laughs> when I think he's back next week. So. All right. Well, thank you so much, Johnny. I got to do apologize for missing you. Just completely dropped the ball in that case. Yeah. Uh, when can we possibly expect you to uh, to race another race? Well, definitely not next week. <laughs> but uh, I don't. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I I was just talking to the guys, the two good guys. And, um, there there may be a couple races here or there, but um, you know it. It's good to have a little bit of a break here and there uh, between races, just to not get too caught up in in anything that's going on, good or bad, in uh, in the league. So <laughs> otherwise, you get the itch or whatever, and you you know you don't want to be part of anything that's going to cause other people uh, trouble when it comes to the championship. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, maybe one. I know there's only a few races left until the playoffs start, but or the chase. I don't know which one it is, but. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you'll see me in a couple weeks. After that, I don't know. <laughs> and it's the, uh, the chase-offs. But thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, we see you again soon. Um, and, uh, well, that's going to do it for uh, from the Infinite Care Center for Johnny Eckert. Uh, J- Johnny Eckert, unfortunately, did not get the finish that he wanted. Justin, race. We're pretty much done here. We're just finishing it up, transitioning on over to the end. I hope you guys had a fantastic time on the booth. You guys definitely felt like naturals there once you got into the heat of the racing. Uh, I want to interview you guys very quickly and shortly and get your takes of what it was like here in, in the in the broadcast booth. And and don't lie, I know the spread wasn't too good here. Uh, we kind of cheaped out on some of the snacks, but you know, hopefully you guys you guys are you guys ate okay. Snacks. What snacks? Yeah. Snacks. It's right behind you guys. Oh what oh. you didn't. You didn't tell us anything. No, you turn uh, around. Man, it was a. Well, I was too busy looking at all the action that we had tonight. No, for real. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've done some races in the uh, in this league, and I'm gonna tell you, it was uh, a lot more fun to be in the broadcast booth than it was on the uh, the track, just because of all the racing and side by side action that we saw tonight. Fantastic racing, pretty much throughout the entire field, both heats. I had an absolute blast watching it. And, uh, doing it with you guys and race as he said earlier today it was a little bit of a reunion so love doing races with you and a uh, ton of fun for my end agree justin i'd say probably the last time i broadcast it was with you several years ago i was shaking off the rust had a lot of fun great production by carlos great commentary by justin great racing by the field so interesting to see the uh the way the pace changed between one and two the big temperature swing and the big invert great idea by the organizers really fun glad to be back at it hope to be back soon that's really it for me thank you all so much all right thank you so much guys everybody thank you so much for tuning in and we will catch you guys next week